Welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about variables. Let's begin by suppressing this feature. Now let's bring in the iLogic browser, double click on variables. Here I've got four variables and each one's data type is declared. Dim indicates that this variable only exists in this rule, it's a local variable. My first variable, int a, is declared as an integer. SNGB is declared as a single. My third variable, DBLC, is declared as a double. And the fourth variable, STRE, is declared as a string. Instead of naming my variables A, B, C, and E, I've actually named them with the prefix that indicates their data type. This type of nomenclature isn't necessary, but it does make it easier to see what kind of variable you're dealing with, and it can make your code easier to read. Here's some examples of commonly used prefixes, but we're not limited to these. You might develop your own, or you might adopt the nomenclature of your company. BLN stands for Boolean, BYT is Byte, CUR, Currency, DTE, Date, DBL, Double, etc. A variable can be declared and initialized at the same time. So when I initialize a variable, I assign it a value. Here, int a is declared as an integer and initialized with the value 5. To initialize a string, type a space, equal sign, space, and then a set of double quotation marks. Now I've got an empty string. And let's type in some text. Now my string variable holds a value, my text. So let's talk a bit about what variables are. Variables are like empty boxes or spaces allocated in your computer memory for storing a value until that value is used somewhere in your program. Let's take a look at variable STRE, which we initialized with the string value myText. So in other words, we have now put the string myText into the variable. Let's type another line of code under this. STRE space equals and a set of double quotation marks. Within the quotes, I'm going to type some text. My text two. So what we've done is replace the value in variable STRE with a new value, my text two. I can also initialize a variable with a value that I retrieve from a parameter. A parameter is basically a variable as well. I'm going to use the message box function to better illustrate what I'm doing here. In the left hand panel of the browser, let's go to the message box branch and click on the plus sign to expand it. Let's double click show and what that does is paste the function right into my editing window. I'll replace the first argument with the variable int a. Let's right click and paste. Let's run the rule, click OK. Here's our result. Let's click OK, double click on variables again. Let's try to initialize integer a with a fractional number. Let's say 5.4 and see what happens. Let's click OK to run the rule. Now since the integer data type is not a fractional number, we end up with 5. Let's click OK. And open the rule again. Let's initialize with 5.6 and see what happens. OK. What Visual Basic does, as you can see, is round the number to the nearest integer. We can also convert one data type into another data type. For our string value, let's enter 10.5. Now even though this is a number, variable e is actually a string, so Visual Basic is going to store this not as a number, but as simple text, in other words, without numerical value. We can explicitly convert this value to a double, however, and you saw me do that in our first tutorial. Let's type the code dbl c, uppercase c, equals space. And I'll use the cdbl function down below. 
Type here S-T-R-E. Okay, let's talk about what I've done here. We've declared variable E as a string. We've initialized it with a value, 10.5. Down below, we've converted the string to a double. We place the resulting value in variable C. To convert back to a string, type the variable E name, S-T-R-E, space, equal sign, space, now DBL, C, dot, to string. Open and close parentheses. Now we've converted the value stored in variable C to a string, and we've placed it in variable E. Okay, let's place this variable in the first argument of our message box. Let's right-click and paste. I need a space between the amper symbol and this variable. And let's put in some double quotation marks, a space, the amper symbol. Here's a null or empty string, but let's put a space in there. And let's run our program, click OK. And here's our results. So you might be thinking, how can I tell which one's the double and which one's the string? Well, I'll teach you about data inspection in a subsequent tutorial. Data inspection is what lets you know what kind of data you're working with. In our next tutorial, we're going to cover operators, and then we'll start working in a little more detail with the functions. This concludes our tutorial about data variables.